The Curious Tale of Phyrex, illustrated by Julia Patton. Story by Jamie and Jules Oliver, Amanda Holden, Ronan Kidding, Sir Paul McCartney, Kate Moss, and other celebrities. On a bright summer's day, on a green grassed farm, stood a small cottage. The morning sun shone through a bedroom window onto a girl's face, waking her to start the day. But this was no ordinary girl, and today would be no ordinary day. This was Phyrex, half girl, half dinosaur. Ten years ago, when Phi, as she was known then, was just a baby, she found a magic glowing fossil on the beach. From the moment she touched it, the bottom half of Phi turned into a magnificent dinosaur. Far from bothering Phyrex, being half a dinosaur definitely had its advantages. The alarm clock rang loudly and with a quick swish of her tail, she switched it off. Phyrex had been dreaming of cakes. Snuggling back under the covers, she was just returning to her scrumptious thoughts when there was a knock at her bedroom door. Wake up, sleepy scales, shouted a little boy's voice. Mom says I'm not allowed to open my presents until you come downstairs. It was Phyrex's little brother, Max. It was his seventh birthday today, and that meant the whole family was going to a theme park. Once everyone was dressed, they jumped into their car and soon arrived at the turreted park gates. Mox happed with delight as they stood at the entrance. I can go on all the rides now, I'm seven, he shouted excitedly as a tiny dark cloud floated above their heads. Looks like rain, thought Phyrex sadly. Suddenly, a tumble of sweeties in every imaginable color rained down on them. The smell was amazing, all sugary and delicious. Max and Phyrex danced excitedly in the rainbow sugar storm, grabbing handfuls of sweets and stuffing them into their mouths and pockets. Stop! Stop! came a voice from behind the turnstile. It was a small elf waving his hands at them. Whatever you do, don't eat the green ones. Too late, shouted Phyrex as she swallowed a huge mouthful of green gooey yumminess. Phyrex's feet started to tremble. Oh no, muttered the elf, wringing his hands. Those green sweets take you to the land of your imagination. And just as he said it, everything started vanishing. The people in the queue had dissolved into thin air, and worse still, her family was nowhere to be seen. Phyrex rubbed her eyes in astonishment as she found herself standing in a busy market filled with the strangest of creatures doing the strangest things. At one stall, three goblins argued over a card game. At another, Missy the fairy giggled at a jock in the box. An alley cat was sniffing around all the food, and close by, a cyclops was trying on a pair of glasses. But weirdest of all, when Phyrex looked down, her dinosaur tail and legs were gone. She had turned into a real girl, and she wasn't sure if she liked it. Chase the colorful storm, and it will take you home shouted the elf just as he vanished with a pop. Without her tail for protection, Phyrex was terrified. Taking a deep breath, Phyrex tried to think calmly. It's going to be okay, she whispered quietly to herself. I've always wanted to go on a big adventure, and with that, she took her first tentative step into the unknown. Phyrex came to the edge of a forest, when she looked up, she saw hundreds of different colored berries hanging from all the trees. The elf's words rang in her ears. 
Chase the colorful storm and it will take you home. Perhaps this is what he meant. Feeling brave, she followed the gnarly branches as they snaked deeper into the woods. Eventually, she came to a clearing and there, to her surprise, was a bright orange river. If she still had her dinosaur legs, she could jump right over it. But she didn't and now she had to think quickly on her feet. She needed to build some kind of raft to cross the river and fast. An icy wind was cutting through the forest. It began to snow big heavy flakes that settled like candy floss on her face. What you looking for? came a voice from the river. Firex looked deeply into the water. Um, I'm trying to cross you, she said slowly, feeling silly. Suddenly a small ripple appeared and up popped an otter's head. How you gonna do that then? it asked cheerfully as Firex shrieked in surprise. By making a raft out of sticks, she said, scrambling to her feet. Well, that won't work, said the otter, hauling himself onto the river bank. We use them all for a den. You want to get up that tree and use that t-shirt of yours like a kite. I saw someone do it last week and it worked a treat. Firex looked at the tall tree doubtfully, but it was her only option. Up she climbed. Here I go, she said as she spread the sleeves of her top. They shone like gossamer wings as a huge gust of wind whooshed her over the river. I'm sailing! Firex squealed with delight as she landed gracefully like an angel on top of a stripy circus tent. Oh no, said Firex trying hard not to cry. Which way is home? I'll give you a clue, said a booming voice from behind a tree. But first of all, you'll have to perform a trick. To Fi's astonishment, a circus ringmaster stepped out with three lions standing neatly beside him. Take these three balls, he bellowed. The first must be a header, the second a spin, and the last a straight strike. Fi gulped. She was as good at playing football as any of the boys at school, but she'd never tried it with her girl legs before. She headed the first ball. As the lion caught it, her legs started to turn back into her dinosaur wands. The second ball spun straight through the air towards the next creature. Miraculously, her big tail appeared behind her. Fi swished her tail and the final ball landed straight in the third lion's paws. Congratulations, said the ringmaster, handing her an envelope. Inside is everything you need to take you home. Phew! Finally, she would be going back to her family. Before opening the envelope, she took a moment to think of all the wonderful things that would be waiting for her back home. The warm, heartfelt cuddles from mom and dad, hot chocolate with marshmallows before bedtime, and her favorite board game of Spot the Dinosaur Fossil, because she always wins. Firex had even started to miss Max and his horrible habit of picking bogeys. Ripping open the envelope, she could hardly contain her excitement. Inside was a piece of golden paper with a riddle written on it. To get back home where it's nice and warm, watch your step and stay out of the storm. Only if you choose the right way will you be home by the end of the day. Firex crumpled up the note crossly. What a load of nonsense! I'm never going to get home, she said as a single drop of rain fell from the sky and landed with a plop on her nose. In an instant, the clouds turned gray and a single drop had turned into a torrential downpour. Well, this just won't do at all, came a voice behind her. Firex turned around to see a small man dressed all in white. I'm sorry, but what won't do? Fi asked, confused. Well, the rain, of course. With all this water, we won't be able to play the game, shall we, my dear? 
What game? Firex asked. And who are you? Well, he replied indignantly. I'm the umpire, of course. The umpire, said Firex. Yes, the game we're about to play is soon to become an actual sporting event in the next Olympics. My name is Keith, Keith Lemon. I'm here to make your brother's seventh birthday party the best party ever, and the game is called Don't Show Keith Your Teeth. The game was a word association game. You mustn't laugh, pause, or repeat a word, but most of all, you mustn't show Keith your teeth, he explained. Okay, Firex, first you will be playing against this banana boy. His name was Barry, and like Firex, he was half human. The rest of him was banana. Barry became half fruit when he was hit over the head one day in the school playground by a radioactive banana. A scientist had chucked it over the wall after trying to invent fruit that could walk to the supermarket by itself. Keith stood between Firex and Barry the banana and started the first round of the game. Okay, the word I'm going to give you is donkey, said Keith. Farm, shouted Firex quickly. Banana, replied Barry. That's 50 bonus points to you, said Keith excitedly, patting the banana on the back. You're making this up as you go along, aren't you? Firex said to Keith, feeling very annoyed. No, I'm not. The winner is Barry the banana. He shouted triumphantly, handing the banana a shiny gold medal. Barry was so happy he slipped over his banana skin buddy. I want a rematch, Firex said. Actually, I just want to go home. Well, why didn't you say so? Keith said kindly. All you have to do is go to the top of the mountain and dive into the lake. What mountain? Firex asked. As she did so, a snowy peak appeared on the horizon. But how? Oh, Firex turned to see Keith vanishing as quickly as he'd appeared in the first place. Good luck, little diner girl, he waved. Can I come with you? asked Barry the banana as Firex helped him up off the floor. As long as you don't do any more splits, she said as they headed up the mountain together. As they neared the peak, Firex could hear an instrument being tuned. What's that noise? asked Barry. It sounds like an orchestra, said Firex. And I think it's coming from behind those bushes. I wouldn't disturb that lot if I were you. A voice nearby is quick. Who said that? asked Firex. They looked down to see a beetle looking up at them. They're always at it, like eight days a week. Who are they? asked Firex, peering down at him. The frogs, of course, the beetle replied. Give us a lift up and I'll show you, but you have to be quiet. Peeking through the leaves, they could see hundreds of frogs tightly packed around the edge of a lake. They always stand together, you see, it's better for the singing. Suddenly, a large fat frog holding a baton let out a huge croak. It was so loud, it made Barry the banana slip over again, and as Firex tried to save him, they both tumbled out of the bushes and landed with a plop on a lily pad. Oh, are you here for the concert? asked the conductor, spinning round. Of course we are, Firex replied. It feels like we've been queuing for hours. Have we? asked Barry. They sat down as the conductor topped his baton and the band started playing their instruments. In the middle of the pond, a large lily flower opened and four frogs jumped out singing and dancing as the huge crowd let out crocs of delight. day, Firex asked. Their pond direction, screamed a frog hopping up and down. I've got all their albums and I love that's what makes your croc so full. Never heard of them, said Firex. They're very good, said Barry. Harry, Louis, Neil and Liam are my favorites. That's all of them, snorted Firex. 
I know! Barry Bim. Firex watched as the band jumped and danced and sang. At the end, they raised their hands to silence the excited crowd. Are we all having fun? They asked. Crocs erupted in response. We are pun direction and we need one of you up here to help us. All the frogs hop up and down, waving their hands to get their attention. She'll do it, shouted Barry the banana. Pan Direction looked over to an embarrassed Firex. Don't mind him, she said. I'm not here to sing. I'm just here to get home. Well, if you help us, we'll help you, Harry said, taking her hand and pulling her onto the lily pad. Well, you don't see that every day said a shrill voice above the hushed crowd. It was Gary, one of three ducks from a group called Quack That, who had been sunning themselves on a nearby river bank. They were known as the Quiz Champions of the Forest. What's that then? Quack Howard ruffling his feathers. Don't look up, said Gary mischievously. Let's make it a game. Brilliant idea, Quack Mark and Howard in unison. They love the quiz. Is it a big metal flying object with loads of humans flying through the sky? Asked Howard. No, as if, laughed Gary. Is it a big metal object with loads of humans inside driving through the grass? Asked Mark. No, you're way off. What's green, has two arms, two legs, dark hair, and a huge green tail? Asked Gary. Mark and Howard closed their eyes and thought really long and hard, and then, as if by magic, said, Is it a half-girl, half-dinosaur called Firex riding on a lily pad with Harry from Pond Direction? How did you guess that? exclaimed Gary. Because we're the quiz champions, and all three did a high wing quack that. Oh dear, and it looks like they might need our help, said Gary. Right in the middle of the water, Firex and Harry the Frog were clinging frantically onto a lily pad which was spinning out of control. Help! cried Firex holding on for dear life. Gary swooped over. What's going on? he asked as he landed beside them. This chivalrous frog has been trying to swim me back home, but we don't seem to be going anywhere, he sniffed Firex. I'm just desperate to get home for my brother's birthday, she gulped. Say no more, said Gary as he scooped up Firex and put her on his back. It's not exactly a private jet, but you'll be back for good before you know it. And with that, they soared into the sky. This is amazing, screamed Firex. I can see for miles. Then suddenly, a rainbow of colors started to appear over the horizon. Is that the colorful storm that will take me home? She asked excitedly. Looking down, Firex could now make out a river below with hundreds of rainbow flying fish jumping in and out, their shimmering colors reflecting in the ripples. It's a fish rave, Gary announced as his wings swooped just inches above the water. Help, I'm going to fall off, Firex shouted as she lost her grip on Gary's neck. Good day, I'll take it from here said the sweetest of voices. A small fairy took her trembling hand and they fluttered into the darkness. Now close your eyes and count to three. One, two. Are you all right, Fi? It was mom lifting her off the floor. You fell off your chair as Max was blowing out his candles. Fi Rex stood shakily on her dinosaur feet, looking at the flickering glow on top of the birthday cake where a fairy stood holding a candle. Thanks for the card, Fi, Max said to her. But you could have put something cooler on it than a banana singing to frogs. Trust me, Barry is cool. Firex said, looking at the cards, presents, and decorations in the room. There on the table was a fluffy toy lion, a ginormous jar of jelly beans in every color, a book about utters, and a duck-shaped party hooter. How bizarre, maybe it was a dream after all, she thought to herself. She looked at her family lovingly. What's the matter, Fi? asked her mother. Nothing, mom. I was just thinking how lucky I am to have you all, she said. Come on, you, let's get to that theme park. 
Mom replied throwing fire eggs at Colt which she expertly caught with her tail. Just as she closed the door, Firex took a moment to take one quick look around. Thanks for helping me guys, even if it wasn't real. I really had a great time. You're very welcome, said a beetle sitting on the window ledge. Hi, if you like this video, please give this a like and hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I release a new video.